So spoilers for whatever movies show up here. You've been warned. <laughs> So a friend of ours uh, commented and gave us a suggestion, a recommendation. He wanted to know what some of our favorite movies are, probably to try and get an insight into the, our minds. My deep psyche. Yes, good luck to him and trying to do that with these videos. Well, first off, I'm gonna say I hate narrowing down what I like into such a broad list. So I resent it a little bit. But <laughs> these are some of our favorites. This isn't our top five or top whatever. It's just some of our favorites. Yes. I tried to get kind of a broad range of what I like. Yes. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Clue. <laughs> if you were a child of the late 80s, early 90s, this is what you watched at slumber parties, or at least what we did. <laughs> and to this day, it's kind of a, it's like a comfort food movie. It's, it's a camp movie that constantly gets referenced. Yeah, and we've talked about how I don't like escapism, but right. maybe this might be my kind of escapism. Yeah. It's one of the best Agatha Christie movies on the <laughs> yeah. movie screen. It's not an Agatha Christie movie. I don't care about the board game Clue, by the way. I actually don't even like it that much. But it's the setup of Seven Strangers... In like the 1930s or 40s, I want to say. I mean, who cares? That's the thing about this movie. Yeah. In a creepy mansion. And it does the right thing where it just has fun. It makes murder silly and it just has fun. When I think about other Agatha Christie movies, namely the Murder on the Orient Express films, both of them, <laughs> they were either too serious and overwrought, or basically they were too serious and overwrought. Clue is just fun. I, I wonder, like, so I don't know anything about the backstory of the movie, so maybe they all hated each other, but I have to imagine that they all had a great time making it. Yeah, I think it's, it, They're just, like, doing silly and goofy stuff yeah. and, like, running back and forth, and they're breaking... They're basically breaking the fourth wall in sections. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> and Tim Curry elevates everything he's in. I'm so sad that he's having such a rough time of yeah. life right now. It's a real bummer because there's a bunch of movies in the 80s and 90s that are crap that Tim Curry is still worth seeing in them. Like the It movie. I liked him in the Three Musketeers movie. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And yes, it's just a fun, silly movie. Did you see this when it was in theaters? No, I did not. Okay. It was a rental. It was 100% a rental. I feel like that's also a thing of like the 80s and 90s versus now. Like you rented movies a lot and now you stream them, you know? Well, in this movie, if I recall correctly, you saw a different ending depending on... And it was supposed to like bring repeat viewers, but instead it discouraged people from seeing it or something like that. <laughs> Whereas on the rental, you got to see all, all three, three endings, them. which really makes sense. Yeah, which is which is your favorite ending. Oh, I want to watch it with all three. You've I ne mean, you never like, oh, you just jumped to this one ending. I mean, I like the ending where they all did it. Yeah. But I like seeing the different permutations of who it could be. Yeah. Second on my list is Spirited Away. Yeah, this was the one I was jealous of because, oh man, I really, you're right, I just love Spirited Away, <laughs> too. I mean, Howl's Moving Castle is another great Miyazaki film, but yeah. I think Spirited Away is beginning to end the cleanest, focused, best of the, um, not Pixar, of the Miyazaki films. Yes, Studio Ghibli. Yes, um, and it's a little sad in a way, and it's a little hard to watch in some ways, but all the creatures, all the imagination, I just, I want, it's one of those movies where I want to live in that world. I want to go on that train with no face out, like, it's it's train tracks going through the water out to um, the Crone Sisters yeah. place in the, it's like, the fact that I can't do that is like heartbreaking to me <laughs> on a level because it's just such an imaginative neat beautiful world with hard edges and 
and strange creatures and people there to help you. I like kids movies that aren't too fluffy and yeah. like trying to make everything happy. There's a lot of really sad stuff in this movie. Yeah. And you really feel for Sen, the main character, and you really yeah. get into her character. Like her character's really well built. <laughs> it makes me think of like Phantom Tollbooth or um, yeah. Chronicles of Narnia or um, Never Ending Story. It's like part of this whole genre of kids' movies where like they go on some fantastical adventure. Yeah. And for me, this is probably the fantastical adventure I would most like to go on. Yeah. I, that makes sense to me. I mean, I, I this is the movie that exemplifies the best of Ghibli because some Ghibli movies get too out there in a very general way. Mm -hmm. The Miyazaki ones, at least, get kind of out there. Whereas this one, it's still rooted, like, even when something's fantastical, there's a reason there's a giant baby. Yeah. You know, there's a reason that, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I forget the male, the boy's name. There's a reason Haku? he turns... Yeah, I think so. There's a reason he turns into a dragon. Yes. You know? Like, it all has a purpose. Yes, and it's beautiful. Yes. Third on my list is The Crying Game. Now for something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> the crying game is so well constructed as yeah. far as like i love things that play with genre and you think you're watching a thriller but it might also be the strangest romance you've ever seen the movie begins with um when a man loves a woman yes and it ends with stand by your man I, see, the thing I was going to ask you, you love good musical choices, and this movie has two really good ones. Yes, and that's where um, in uh, A Fantastic Woman, I love that they did um, Natural Woman. Like, yeah. In this case, you know, the one of the main plot twists is that a character turns out to be transgender. Yeah. And I kind of have heard that, like, that's that's the nightmare of, of a transgender person is, like, you think you're with someone who knows that, who gets it. Yeah. And you reveal yourself and your vulnerability. And they I think just, he, like, throws up. I mean, he's yeah, really freaked out. Yeah, he's just completely... T he didn't realize, he didn't know, and he reacts in a way that's not great, but I guess understandable. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, he's he's just some guy. He's yeah. just some Irish guy. He's already, like, he was involved in a terrorist organization. I mean, right. how well do you... I mean, well, I guess a, an organization that's considered a terrorist organization. Yeah. How how do you expect him to react? But it doesn't stop there. Like, no. that's not the ending of the movie at that's all. That's not what makes it a weird romance. It's not that it's a guy and suddenly he's with a transgender <laughs> woman. No, it's everything that surrounds them. And everything that happens after that moment. I mean, there are so many movies where someone being transgender or some kind of gender dysmorphia or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Is, is kind of like the end of the story. Yeah. Like, in The Silence of the Lambs, Buffalo Bill has some weird stuff going on. There's a horror film, I can't remember the name, but, like, the big punchline is it turns out this character has been forced to live as a girl when they're really a boy. Yeah. And that's, like, the horror of the situation. But, like, this is like, okay, this happens, and now what? And, yeah. like, um, Stephen Ray's character forces the transgender character to, like, Dressed like a boy. Yeah. To hide herself. Yeah. And there's something just so awful and unpleasant about yeah. that. And you know, and in the middle of this all, it's like a thriller. It's like about the IRA trying to like yeah. kill people to get attention for their plight. And right. Well, and somehow wrapped in with all that is this really kind of charming. Maybe charming is wrong. Where this love story between these two characters, <laughs> one of when one of the characters who doesn't even really fully get it, and yeah. one who wants it to be there, but kind of it can't but it's so complicated because of everything else and expectations what are you expected to do yeah or not? everything's messy yeah. and i like it when everything's messy because even if you go back forrest whitaker you know this is his girlfriend yeah and that's why stephen ray gets involved with her but forrest whitaker wasn't a good boyfriend he kept cheating on her yeah so but she still loved him and he yeah. still loved her and like i would not want to be in that relationship but life is messy and yeah. i really I and people are messy, yeah. and, that's, and that's fine to be messy, you And know? this is, like, such a focused, well-done, well-constructed, messy film. Yeah. The film itself isn't messy. No. And I love that about it. Uh, yeah, and the ending is fantastic. Yes. Next on my list, On the Waterfront, I wanted to include an older Hollywood film. Marlon Brando, when he's young, Eva Marie Saint, in one of her first, I think it is her first film, 
Carl Malden um, giving like the most impassioned priest speeches. Um, Elia Kazan's the director. I just, I love this movie. Yeah. It has, I guess it's the dialogue. It has such great dialogue and yeah. such great speeches. That could have been a contender. And on top of that all, Elia Kazan gets a lot of crap for having been one of the people who spoke. Named names. Named during... names. And this is kind of his response to it. Yeah. And I feel like he's trying to over-defend himself a little bit too much. Maybe. But I also feel it's interesting that people want to make Elia Kazan the demon in this story. Yeah. When it's like, no, it was um, Senator Joe McCarthy. He was the bad guy. Yeah. Elia Kazan maybe made the wrong choice. And that's not like if you're one of the names he named, sure, I. I understand well, why you're pissed at him. I don't know. The choice he made wasn't necessarily commendable. Yeah. It may have just been what he had to do to survive. Yeah. He gets a lot of people talk, being really mean to him yeah. about it. And it's like, this is his response. This movie is kind of his response yeah. to that. And I think this movie makes good points. Yeah. I don't know. It, But yeah, it's got great drama and it's got great moments. It's got some great pigeons. It's got some great pigeons in it. Some pigeons die. Oh. In this movie. I mean, every pigeon in this movie is dead. <laughs> think about it. I think so. Well. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And it's been a few years since the movie was made. I think actually most of the actors who are in this movie are now dead. All yes. Even Marie Saint is still alive. Is she, still alive? Oh. she was at the Oscars like last oh, year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's noticeable to me because I think all four of the main actors uh, actors in this were all nominated, and I think three of the four won. Yeah, the I think awards. she won, didn't she? I think she did. Yeah. Brando was the only one who didn't, and uh, you know, Oscars, you know, whatever. But it's just interesting that it's thought of so well in terms yeah. of its acting. Yeah, you know, it's it, uh, there. There's such a great core cast to this movie. Yeah, I could just quote so much of this movie to you, and and uh, it's just. It's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. <laughs> and the last movie on my list is 45 Years. Yes. Which is one of the more recent movies. You have been talking about this movie. It came out three years ago, and I feel like I've heard about it every month since it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I love this movie. I picked it because it has... It's a non-life-affirming film about older people. <laughs> and older people movies are so often like, and then she gets her new husband, and they open a hotel in India, and life's always worth living. And sure, I mean... Those, those movies can be fine, but that's definitely the mainstay of the genre. And yeah. this is not that movie. <laughs> As we're making this video, a book club is out, and it looks like... And it's got great actresses in it, and I just have no interest in seeing it, because yeah. it's like... You know, like, it, yeah, <laughs> this is like, this is the older person movie that's about, I may have made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I really like about it is, oh God, another one where it's just so well constructed. Yeah. I've been rewatching it just to try and kind of pull it apart and see how its insides work and just how much of the dialogue ties into things that happen. Okay, so it's about this woman whose husband's dead ex-girlfriend's body is found. She's like frozen. She fell during a hiking excursion. Yeah. More than 45 years ago. And they never found the body. And now right. they find it. And just that very image that they are now... It's been like 50 years, and she is perfectly preserved in ice. Yeah. And so she's still the way she was when she died, and now they're these old people. And the imagery of, um, I keep bringing in climate change, and in this case it's like, but, but it's about like the melting of the ice and the way it breaks the rocks. Well, and he, the, uh, Tom, whatever his name, I forget the name of the character, but he the, that guy he's looking at books and trying to like make sense of it <laughs> yeah it's like his way of like trying to get the, to the bottom of it and maybe even himself in some way and it's this kind of twisted thing that he's doing and he's right. trying and, to make trying to like pull it apart and the whole thing is about how much of her life it turns out and her marriage the main characters has been affected by this relationship of his that was over before she met him yeah and just how they seed that in, how the entire first 20 minutes of the movie, almost every decision she makes on screen is because of him. 
and she says it. She says, oh, we wanted, because they're getting ready for their anniversary. And she's like, oh, we're going to do this because my husband doesn't like this. Oh, we're going to do this because this is how Jeff feels about it, and so on. And yet she's not depicted as a weak character. No, she, it, that's the funny thing is when I saw this, I kind of had issues with her character. And because you've talked about it basically every month <laughs> since it came out, I've had to think about it a lot. And I think I've decided that I might have some issues with choices she kind of makes, but she's not a weak character. Those moments where it's kind of like she's doing something because of him, they're actually small moments. She's still making bigger decisions and she's still doing what she wants to do, she thinks. Yeah. It's more pernicious and like yeah. subtle and like she, it's like she does not realize how manipulated her marriage has been. Right. And she makes a big, the big choice at the end is yeah. her choice. It's just she makes the wrong choice. Yes. Um, and also the horror aspects. I think the filmmaker knew that what he was making has like these existentially horrific overtones. So there's just the very lightest kind of just emptiness and strange noises and things that really belong in a horror film. You want to make everything a horror film because you like I, horror movies. Well, I think life is fundamentally a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> so that pretty much covers my favorite no some of my favorite films and why they are my favorite films i you know realizing i've seen all of these movies uh, yeah. yeah and i also like all of these movies you she has good taste thank you stay tuned next week no no stay tuned for our next discussion video where i'm going to talk about some of my favorite movies they're not as good as mine <laughs> Uh, leave comments down below if you have suggestions for other discussions you want us to do, other movies you want to talk about, us to talk about, or whatever. Just say hi, and we'll say hi back.